where I am. Um, good evening. I'm Stacey Lindon, father of the, of the 17th legislative district. Um, as of today, my district goes from 73rd Street to 183rd Street, so I take them to the southeast side of Chicago from the lake to the Dan Ryan. I go out to Lansing, Illinois. My new district goes from 79th Street uh, down to the Piatone, Illinois. So um, yeah. I gave up three aldermen and picked up about nine mayors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's a good exchange. <laughs> Some of us so. Well, look, Wait, look. Yeah, but he didn't pick you up, Paul. That's right. <laughs> well, the good thing about it is, uh, I love this state. Uh, I have represented uh, my district first as state representative for four years. Uh, then in 1992, I went to the Senate. Uh, and in my positions there, for 14 years I chaired propagations. So being over propagations, Emil Jones told me, God, there, we have problems. He said, I want you to be my chairman. At this time, we're in a minority. He said, I want you to be the Democratic spokesperson on appropriations. We have two problems. One, I'm a Democratic leader. You being a Democratic person over appropriations. The problem is we're both black. And the other problem is, or maybe a problem, is we're both from the city. So right there, people are not going to want to listen to us unless we do an absolutely the correct thing, and that is represent all of the people in the state of Illinois. At the time, I was chairman of the uh, <coughs> Legislative Black Caucus. So, so they were not seen as if I was catering to my special interest groups. Um, I had to give that up. And so, but in that capacity, I was able to learn a lot about this state because I had to talk to every member, uh, be they from Iroquois, Quant County, Sangamon County, all the way down. It didn't make any difference. They had to come to me and talk to me about what their concerns were. Uh, I'm the three-time winner of the Farm Girl Award, because I've a lot of time <laughs> uh, uh, in Southern Illinois. And it, it was easy for me, because what I did say, I was actually born, uh, what I used to tell people, Northern Mississippi, but it's really called Cable Illinois. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it wasn't as if this, this state was foreign to me. But uh, I got much more intimate with the various nuances of the work that's going on. So going down to the Piatone is no major thing other than uh, I now have to pay attention to gas prices, <laughs> which wasn't an issue too much before. Um, I'm also, to give you a little of my background, how I got into the uh, I'm from a family of activists. Uh, we, were, we were the marchers in the 60s. We were the ones who said we didn't want these Willis wagons, which were basically the mobile homes in the city of Chicago. We are the ones who said we wanted our civil rights, we wanted our human rights, we wanted it now. So I grew up in that environment. And so, and I was doing the 60s. So when I went to the way to school, I would continue on with that kind of mindset that we need to make change. Uh, I was with many moves at the time. Uh, and, but I gradually found out that it would have been easier, easier for all, to work from within the system. So I moved back to Chicago from um, Berkeley, California. Moved back here, got involved in a guy who was a congressman at the time, Ralph Mankow. Uh, Ralph was running against this gentleman named Irwin France. Uh, he was Mayor Daly, the first mayor. First King uh, was going to run against. Me. So I came home, worked in that campaign, discovered I had some kind of organizational skills. Uh, they asked me would I stay, and then be the administrative assistant to state representative Louis Caldwell, who was on the sixth ward at that time, state senator Harold Washington. Uh, I was their guy. That's how I discovered Springfield. So uh, that was back in 1977. So essentially, I've, I've been in that arena since 1977. We worked with many campaigns. Carol Mills Cabral decided to move up. Um, I was tapped on the shoulder and said, hey, what about you? You know the process, you know Springfield. And as they said, the rest is history, I've been here ever since. 
So that's the big picture. I worked my real job. Was I was one of the senior administrators of Cook County Hospital. Commonly uh, called the on duty administrator. I worked the nights, off weekends. We were the, the head of the hospital on the night shift. Did that, ultimately became the director of minority health of Cook County Department of Public Health. Um, ultimately went to uh, Lloyd Law School, got a degree in health law. So I actually went to Springfield being a health care advocate, fighting for one parity in the delivery of the health system. So, so that's who I am. What have I been doing since I've been here? Uh, as appropriations have been on the federal budget, uh, since when we had the smallest budgets in the small community, back when they were 20 million up to the 56 billion dollars right, here in the state of Illinois. The budget now, as you know, is 32.9 billion dollars. Significantly, significantly lower than what it's been in the past couple of years because we realize we have to do things differently. Uh, have, like most folks, uh, we, with the resources that we have, we have to live within those means. With that being said, uh, I reluctantly voted for this budget. The budget that we have now, I think, is my basic call across the Crossbones because I think it hurts some of the most vulnerable people that I have said that I was going to support uh, in my tenure in the General Assembly. We're hurting those individuals who need our resources the most in a time when they need it. Talking about the mentally ill, we have slashed those funds to that disgraceful of what we're going to become mentally ill. We once again are going to go back to the 1980s when our biggest institutions were our chairs. That's what's going to happen to these individuals. Those who are getting out to the streets. We cut our programs, which I used to be very proud of, and that was kick I was one of the architects of that program, which ensured that sure we got help. Uh, no matter what you say about our government, previous government, uh, he took that concept, took it to all kids. We cut that, and now it's just almost all kids. So we're talking about some of the most vulnerable folks we have. We've seen the programs that we cut, our treatment programs that we cut. And once again, you probably hear uh, I'm concerned about the health care, the welfare of our folks here in the state of Illinois. Uh, so I was one of those individuals that actually said we should put in at least minimum of $434 million into the budget to at least try to shore up those costs until we can see if this income tax plan that we passed uh, last year is really good enough to get some space in the And it is. It may not seem like it, but it is really at the end of that quarter, the uh, last quarter of last year, uh, FY11, uh, we raised $964 million in new revenues for the state of Illinois, almost a billion dollars. And that was off of personal income. We raised from our corporate in tax amounts in the room, about like four hundred and thirty million dollars. So the taxes work. Is it going to get us out of the hole we're in? That was never the intent. But the intent was to ensure that we didn't go any deeper in that hole. So that that has happened. Uh, I think the state of Illinois can help. Uh, I want to represent the people of the state of Illinois. I'm not through yet. I think I still have some work. To or one being that, that continuity, that continuum of, of the good things that need to happen here in the state of Illinois. Unlike a lot of people, and I've been around for a while and I've traveled around the country uh, with other general senators, I'm also an executive board for the uh, National Conference of State Legislators, which is a national organization made up of uh, legislators from around the country. Sit on the Council of State Governments, which is a which is state government itself. We also have the Czech Republic on there and the Baltimore. And those states that even though they don't have the deficit we have, are suffering more because there's no continuity in which you have that, that thing called term limits. By the time you learn what the heck is going on, 
this time you got to do it. For you to learn what's going on now, you have to formulate an agenda that you in the back of your mind knows it's not going to go through because everything that we do is a protracted battle. You don't, get, you don't accomplish what you want in the first eight years, sometimes even ten years. Good things take time to actually develop. I've been able to do some good things and strengthen them and have to continue uh, to work on those tracks, work on helping our good friends, as you pointed out, to a and mentoring those individuals that have the potential uh, to do some wonderful things. So, with that being said, any questions? <laughs>